for the top eight of the Invitational. Jacob Baugh was 11, was 11 and 1 entering the modern rounds here. Things have not gone his way. Starts off turn one, gemstone mine, insolent neonate. Back to Cuvier. Ink Moth Nexus into Signal Pest will be his play. Now, flying is something the Dredge doesn't have too much game against. Nope, but if Ba is able to produce a Narc Amoeba, that generally squares off pretty well against Signal Pest. Mana Confluence for Ba. He will main deck Dark Blast the Signal Pest. Oh my gosh. That card's pretty brutal in this matchup, too. It is a one of in Jacob's main deck. How ridiculous is it that he has it? This is a nightmare for John. Yes. And it's a dredger, so he can start going off with that. John plays a second Ink Moth Nexus, plays Cranial Plating, says go. It will Jacob dredge? I, I would have to think so. I would want to have Dark Blast in my hand. Uh, cranial Plating Ink Moth is very scary, but you have to be able to connect. And the hits keep coming. Ba dredges Dark Blast, hits Narc Amoeba Bloodgast. So he has a flying blocker for a Nexus now. He has that Dark Blast still in his hand. He'll hit with Neonate. He's got everything going except for a reliable big dredge card. Yeah, he has no la third land to trigger the Bloodgast. Um, if he could find life from the loam, his position would be very excellent. Back to Cuvier, we will go. Turn three, he untaps with two Ink Moths and a Cranial Plating. He'll play a basic Mountain, his only basic land in the deck. You see the one of Galvanic Blast in his hand. Now, how does he get a Nexus like this around a card like Dark Blast? Uh, Arcbound Ravager is generally his best way to beat Dark Blast. You can move those modular counters around, get ahead that way. Um, outside of Ravager, you know, he has Steel Overseer. That just dies to Dark Blast. That's a non-starter. He's really just looking at Ravager. So John does nothing with his turn. We go to Jacob's turn. He attacks with both creatures. Galvanic Blast will shoot down the Narc Amoeba. Fortunately for Ba, he did draw land this turn. It's another gemstone mine. All right, that, that's great. He has a prized amalgam. I guess he could hard cast. Yep. Uh, at the same time, I don't know if I ever want him to take down that Dark Blast man. I'm just pretty worried about this plating ink moth. Currently, Ba is under no real distress. He has no infects. Uh, he's not poisoned at all. And QVA just has the one plating. He can animate both lands. Theoretically, he can get up to, say, four poison pretty easily. But ten, I'd be surprised. So this is really interesting. Ba's going to Dark Blast his own Neonate and sacrifice it in response. The idea here is he wants to get more dredge into the graveyard. So he can discard. So he'll discard prized amalgam to draw off the top of his deck. I don't really... What, help me out here. Do we, what is the point of this? Dark Blast into the Is that the, the only dredger he has access to? He has a Grave Troll in his well, hand. Well, he just drew that off the Neonate. That was a nice gift from... Okay. I guess he has another land and a Neonate. So, and that, okay, this is gonna make sense. Now he plays Gemstone Mine. He was worried about his ability to have a dredger. Mm -hmm. So he gets back the, the Bloodgast. And that will trigger Prized Amalgam, and he says go. So he's, he's shields down, right? Yeah, on, on this window, QVA, um, let's see if John's able to produce Arcbound Ravager. I mean, you got to worry that Affinity's going to 10 poison you if, you if you let the shields down, right? Doesn't have anything like pump spells, though. He, he's well below the threshold of artifacts yeah, that he I, needs to make that happen. I Doesn't have so. enough mana to produce a second cranial plating, which is really what he needs to make that kind of threshold. Dar or the Dark Steel Citadel. You're, yeah, you, you're thinking it's unlikely he's just sitting on a stack of Memnites. His hand would have to be a stack of Mox Opals to get enough mana, even. Yeah, I guess so. What is Cuvier's play? You have to think, after, if Cuvier does not kill him this turn, Dark Blast is never going anywhere. Yes. So Ink Moth Nexus will cast Bomat Courier. Nice Kaladesh addition to the deck. Okay, he'll be able to get empty-handed pretty effectively here and convert right. this Courier into some cards, possibly. Courier picks up the plating, exiles a card. So we count the damage. It's a 1-1. One, one. And there are three artifacts in play, so it looks like he'll take four. 
Steel Overseer masterpiece steel overseer. entering the battlefield. He, I would dark blast a, that one. He dropped a point to damage there. Is that what happened? Because if he steal overseers, right, it would be plus one with the cranial yeah. plating. That's fine. Yeah, steel overseer is going to demand a dark blast, but this is interesting because you can't dark blast the steel overseer and then dark blast the ink moth next turn. True. Or if we're going for regular damage, you can the courier certainly block with Narc Amoeba, though. That's fair. Bloodgast will attack for two. Boss choked up right now. He's gonna dark blast the steel overseer. He's got now a grave troll, and Arkham, a grave troll and a stinky imp in his hand, and a red card. We'll don't have a good look on that one as he passes. I think it's Scourge Devil. Oh yeah, that that is the Jacob Baugh Dredge special. Not a he good card. He likes to play to, one of them. Not a good one to have in your hand. Now his hand's a little mopey at the moment. We go back to Cuvier. If he gets double black somehow. He can sneak around Narc Amoeba. Yeah, he can attack with multiple creatures, find a way. He's, he's still pretty light on mana to make that kind of play. Yeah, you have to activate the Nexus, then you have to move the plating. Right. You have to yeah. get two relevant blo uh, attackers. He will cast Signal Pest. Then cast the last card in his hand, it's Vault Scourge. Okay, so empty-handed, he'll be able to convert this Bowman Courier into a couple cards if he chooses. Pretty into that. It's like a red thought cast. If only we could play with thought cast in modern, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bowmat courier will swing. Trigger gets another card. Ball will block with the amalgam. Yeah, Kubi says, yeah, you're right. I wasn't. Yeah. I want the cards. Not actually interested in trading with that amalgam here. It's a blink moth nexus, and it looks to be another cranial plating. Now this I like. A lot of mana, two platings. That's a way to, to get around some defenses. Yes, so with the two platings, now he's threatening to be able to produce lethal attackers, be it with infect or regular combat damage with the bot, 14. Two platings is a lot of damage. The Dredge of Dark Blast from Jacob Baugh. Three cards in the yard. Dakmore, Salvage, Bloodgast, Neonate. His hand, Scourge Devil, Grave Troll, Stinkweed Imp. Not... Nothing special here. I'm I am worried if I am a Jacob Baugh fan right now. The Dark Blast it's, does pad his life total very effectively, yeah, though. Swing for five. I mean, you can't really understate just how good Dark Blast has been here. It's already killed two creatures, and it looks like it's just going to kill a creature every turn. Yep. Yeah, Baugh would love to be able to produce more Narc Amoebas, more prized amalgams, what have you. Uh, for now, the Dark Blast is doing a lot of good work. Um... John doesn't have anything like a main deck spell skite that he can draw to, which would, you know, really wreck the Dark Blast. Uh, still, actually, this is still a great window if he's able to produce Arcbound Ravager. He'd be able to just beat the Dark Blast very handily. Right. And for QBA, still not any black mana sources. No Glimmer Boys, no Mox Opals yet, so we won't be able to move right. these platings around. Right, yeah, if he had double black, he could just kind of overload Jacob's interaction. I mean, right. all Cuvier's threats fly. Jacob only has one flying blocker and only one dark blast. Right. And what about the ability, okay, activate Ink Moth Nexus, Equip it, swing, and if Jacob tries to Dark Blast it, pump it with the Blink Moth. Yeah, with the Blink Moth here now, that uh, takes off the ability to just Dark Blast it down. Uh, Jacob would have to block and then Dark Blast if a pump occurred. You know what card would make this game easy? Arcbound Ravager? That's Champion. Yeah, I'd be into that one. Ink Moth will be activated on, the, on Cuvier's side. Taps a red. He will give an, a, some equipment to the Vault Scourge. Give some equipment to the Ink Moth. Uses his Blink Moth Nexus, so not going to leave up that pump. I guess the Battle Cry on Signal Pass is pretty nice here. It means that his creatures won't. Well, they'll do one more damage. Yeah. 
Yeah, still, they still they don't it doesn't pump toughness, toughness does yeah. it? Yeah, he's he's choosing to overload the dark blast by attacking with multiple creatures, which I believe is a poorer use of resources than just leaving back the blink moth nexus. Yeah, his last job there was Bomat Courier, so he's gonna cast that. There is only one blocker on Baw's side. Uh, something about Cuvier's position, he does have to be concerned about the fact that he is at eight. Yeah, I mean, the, if the, the Vault Scourge connects, that's fine, right? Mm -hmm. Seeing it's, if... not, it's not going to because of the Dark Blast, but uh, this, this is a position where uh, Conflagrate would probably kill Cuvier. Or his board, or just whatever Jacob wanted it to do. Here's a swing. Signal Pass staying back as a blocker. Bomat Courier gets the top card of Cuvier's deck. Now, Ryan, this seems like a straightforward block for Bob. Block one, shoot one, live, move, go on with your life. It certainly looks that way. Um, ba likely trying to determine whether or not he has to block the Ink Moth. A quick artifact count. Looks like seven are on the battlefield. Now, once Ba loses this Narc Amoeba, that is a very scary position for, for Jacob because then he loses control of the air. Right. Yeah, so it looks like he's going to block the Nexus, and I assume shoot the Vault Scourge. I don't think he wants any life gain on this side. Right. That will be the play. Shoot the Vault Scourge. How does he pay with a life pointer with a mine encounter, though? Seems like the gemstone mine would be the way to go. 14 is a pretty high life total, but John is dealing in very heavy amounts of damage. If he has to take two points off of the Confluence, that could be the difference in this game. So some news from the floor. Todd Anderson with a win finishes the 4-0 run in modern. Ends the tournament 11-4-1. So that win will take Ted Felicetti out of the Players' Championship conversation. All right. Well done by Todd. And might just put Todd in. We'll have to see how Shear's match goes. Uh, dredges Dark Blast but misses on Conflagrate. Yeah. Would have made it easy, right? Right. So he'll have to do this the hard way. Here's Bloodcast. John goes to six. <laughs> Ugh. And you know, one of the nice parts about last turn is because of John putting all these platings on the non bomat Courier, he's going to get a second card off the Courier when he attacks next turn. Yeah. And Ba has Stinkweed Imp in hand, but he does not have enough mana to cast Imp and leave up Dark Blast. Yeah, Stinkweed Imp. He, his hand really just hasn't helped him at all this game. Stinkweed Imp, Kulvari Grave Troll, Scourge Devil, those are just... Real garbage things waiting in his hand. Yeah. And he's going to use up his lands, and it looks like Stinkweed Imp as a blocker is going to take the forefront. That is instead of leaving up Dark Blast. So can Cuvelier, Cuvier capitalize here? Yeah, just one flying blocker. You know, Jacob did make the block with the Narc Amoeba, so he currently has no poison counters on himself. Galvanic Blast. That was a one of in his deck. That one's already gone. Cuvier, what can he put together? Looks like Blink Moth Nexus will become a creature. Now we get to put two cranial platings on our things. Pirate Amalgam back as a blocker, too. Yep, that's looking to trade with something on the ground. All right, plating onto the land and the signal pest and a swing. They both fly, so one of them's getting in. Six is the artifact count, so the signal pest attacking for six, the Blink Moth for eight. Yeah, battle cry. Got to make a block. Yeah, it's 14. So Stinkweed Imp blocks the land, which means it looks like six damage. That's what do we count here? Putting Jacob Baw down to seven. Yep. Yeah, they agree. And it says go. The cranial platings actually does not fall off Signal Pest. It one, it's not a land. John can put that plating back on. Should put it back on the signal pest. And, but it's not going to matter. Uh, Jacob Baugh 
Okay, so Ba had a blood gas ready to go. Dredge Dakmore salvage. QVA was below 10. So blood gas has haste. Has haste, he was able to crack in. He still had the amalgam. That's lethal. Great, that is lethal. So game one to Jacob Baugh. He's looking for his first modern win today. And it couldn't, it would be the right time for it. Yeah. That's for sure. Definitely, high, pr high pressure match here. This is a win and in. And you know, that is a game where with the turn one dark blast out of Baugh, I just, I never didn't think it would actually end up being as close as that. Right, the, the, dark, the dark blast is very powerful as a spell, but as far as a dredge enabler, it's pretty mopey. He has a hand that it really didn't do anything, so he was relying on dredging three every turn, and that minus one, minus one. If Cuvier ever had an arcbound ravager, that would have pretty right. easily been his game. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's not very much play. Uh, dark blast does not do well against arcbound ravager. Right. So let's look then at the sideboards. I want to go first to Jacob Baugh's sideboard. The issue with this matchup is, while it's close game one, I believe it actually is Dredge that improves out of the board. Yeah. We have a full set of Thoughtseize, two Collective Brutality, a Surgical Extraction, a Lightning Axe, an Ancient Grudge, a Nature's Claim, a Nod of the Bone, two Abrupt Decays, and two Golgari Charms. The Ancient Grudge, of course, is excellent. Nature's Claim is a great one-for-one, one, uh, very efficient rate. The two Abrupt Decays will be able to destroy anything. Those cards are excellent as well. And the Golgari Charms are quite excellent. Giving all creatures minus one, minus one kills basically everything in Cuvier's deck. Um, Golgari Charm is quite strong. The other modes don't do a lot. You know, Cuvier has Blood Moons in his deck. I assume he's sideboarding them out. So mostly this is going to be the kind of nausea effect just to shrink all the creatures. All right. John Cuvier's sideboard. He's got three Thoughtseize, two Ancient Grudge, two Spellskite, two Grafdigger's Cage, two Etched Champion, a Resting Piece, a Gear Report Aether Grid, a Blood Moon, and a Galvanic Blast. Now keep in mind, there's three Blood Moons in the main already. Yes, uh, which are hopefully coming out <laughs> in this matchup. Uh, the two Grafdigger's Cage are excellent. Graveyard Aid, of course. The two Etched Champions, they would have won game one. I have to imagine that they're coming in here as a way to break through. That when the dredge deck is able to stall you out, the rest in peace, another piece of graveyard hate, that's excellent. Figure all of these cards are coming in. Yeah. So, what is on the line here at the Invitational? The top eight, of course. That guarantees $1,500, 30 SCG points, a chance at so much more. Invitation, of course, to our next Invitational that is happening at the end of June in Roanoke, Virginia. Now, for each of these players, especially for Jacob Baugh, it's been a great tournament. Those 30 SCG points have now qualified him for, or the, rather the 20 at least that he gets here, should, will have qualified him, we believe, for the Players' Championship. Yes. Very big weekend for Baugh. See if he can uh, make it even bigger. Now on the line, $10,000, 50 SCG points, but not just that. Tomorrow we are playing for the title Players' Champion, an invitation and flight to the Magic the Gathering Pro Tour. Pro Tour Aether Revolt, the next one coming up. That is in Dublin. So it's nothing a good spot. Good, pretty good there. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna poo-poo a flight to Dublin. A token with a personalized token of your choice, created by uh, Star City Games. You get buys and free entry to the opens, and as well as the classics. So a ton on the line this weekend. Yes, uh, winning the Invitational is is huge. All this and ten thousand dollars. So some updates from across the field. Most of our other matches, you see Cedric Phillips in the back, keeping tabs on those ones. What we know, Brad Nelson winning his match. That he was in thirty second. That win should has earned him a spot in the Players Championship. All right. Congratulations to Brad Nelson. Todd Anderson a win. Caleb Shear also winning. So Todd's run here. We're gonna have to see how the ending, the standings shape up. It is unlikely that that will be enough for him to pass Caleb. Nice. One of the two of them will be qualified. Nice tiebreaker sweat. Yeah, it's going to be very close. Game two underway. John starts on Grafdigger's Cage Ornithopter. That was one of the two copies in the sideboard, and it's one of the most important cards. Yep, Grafdigger's Cage is excellent. The downside of this versus Rest in Peace is anything Ba puts in the graveyard in the meantime, he'll be able to access meaningfully down the road. And Ba is bringing in stuff like Ancient Grudge, Abrupt Decay, Nature's Claim, so he's looking for a way to destroy that. So Ba, turn one, Faith is looting. He discards a Dredger in Stinkweed Imp. The question, I guess, is does he have Artifact Destruction? If he doesn't, none of this matters. 
You can't even ancient grudge Cage out of the graveyard. Right. Dredging would be very ineffective unless he really wants to cast a three mana one two flyer. And now John's gonna try to close while Jacob's shields are down. Bowmat Courier is the play. It swings for one. John follows it up with a signal pass. So the battle cry will actually work pretty well as he has he's swarming the board with creatures. Yeah, there's two other creatures currently on the battlefield. If he's able to produce some more Bowmat Couriers. And look at the draw from Ba, though. It is a copy. He draws off the top. He draws one of his abrupt decays. It is what he needed to do here, and now he passes back to Cuvier. That'll help him start playing magic, but then he also has to dredge well from there. He's not out of it yet. Yeah, well, he has to not die to this damage. I mean, Affinity turns the corner very quickly. Yes. Uh, and also with the Bomac Courier, if that's able to attack a couple more times, that's that a gives Cuvier a lot more action, right? So he plays a third land, goes to attacks. Is ba Ba's not thinking hitting the courier, is he? He's Golgari charming. Correction, that might not actually be abrupt decay. Well, but Golgari charm will kill courier. It will kill signal pass. No attacks from Cuvier. This is huge. Yep, he's gone from taking any damage at all to uh, facing out an ornithopter. Edge champion is the play from Cuvier. We go back to Ba. Champion's great. Dredge. Um. Metalcraft is online, so that has protection from everything. Stinkweed imp dredges. It hits a prized amalgam. And a Narc Amoeba, but that's not going to enter the battlefield. Nope. Or will it? It was an abrupt decay. He hits the Graft Digger's Cage with the trigger on the stack. So yes, Narc Amoeba will come into play. Okay. This is this is an excellent swing. Talk. Oh, we'll find out if Cuvier if Cuvier is able to produce a cranial plating. May not matter. Suit up this edge champion. He can kill Bob before he's really able to get going. But uh, now he is on a clock. Faithless looting and Bob is just firing on all cylinders. First, here's a dredge of five. Flips an ancient grudge into the graveyard along with a Narc Amoeba and a Dark Blast. Oh my goodness. So he'll dredge that Dark Blast into his hand. Three more. Yeah, and that uh, ancient grudge there, that'll be a hedge against a potential cranial plating yeah, for Cuvier. I, look at this. So this dredge deck, so not only do Cuvier have a cage, but Boz just, this is, this is doing everything. Whoa. He's got Golgari Charm, he, he kills the yeah. hate card, then he gets a grudge in the graveyard, a dark blast in his hand while dredging through his deck. This is a, out of control. He cast basically two mana Plague Wind. Right. And then he just destroyed the hate card. And which... then he just like drew five on that dredge. And they're all excellent. They're, they're double one mana kill spell and a clock. Reasonable. Fourth land from Cuvier. Last card. Another Graft Digger's Cage. Okay, well, that, that'll turn off that Ancient Grudge. It'll yeah. stop more dredging shenanigans. No, yeah, yeah. You know, and last turn, I guess there's only five power in play. You and see that Cuvier left back the champion, though, as a blocker. Yeah, that'll block the Amalgam. It has protection from whatever, so that'll just bounce. And the two Narc Amoebas, only one can connect through the Ornithopter. And as soon as that Blink Moth Nexus starts being able to pump itself next turn, Ba doesn't have any attacks. So Ba actually dredged Stinkweed Imp here. My thought is he can play it as a 1-2. We might be playing that kind of magic. That one can attack. Also, and this may seem strange, if he starts dredging life from the loam to make land drops and then starts casting Grave Trolls, can he win that way? If Cuvier is not up to anything, absolutely. Like, He's still at 19 versus 20. While I know that's a horrible line, it might be better than drawing cards off the top of the deck. When Dredge draws cards, they, you know, you draw Narc Amoebas. You just, there's a bunch of garbage. So you see, he will cast the Stinkweed Imp. He swung the Narc Amoebas in and then says go. He had the option of using that last mana to finish off Ornithopter and actually declined. Yeah, he'd rather just keep this Dark Blast in his hand. See, he'd like to be able to use it to kill that Blink Moth Nexus or maybe something like a Steel Overseer off the top, which could be a disaster. And Bot, I think he is going for that line. You see him dredging life from the loam now? Oh, yeah, let's let's just... Yeah. One, once he gets up to <laughs> one Grave Troll, he'll be able to start connecting with his Amalgam. Once he gets up to two, he can actually start so good. beating down with these giant monsters. Life from the loam gets back three lands for Jacob Ba. I like a... See, I like my magic tie to be really unfair or... Are really clunky, and this one, this is this is doing it for me. The yeah. second one, right? It's it should look <laughs> like a vintage deck yeah. or like a draft deck. Yeah, yeah. This is I'm gonna play a decent play a five five for five. Maybe you can regenerate it. <laughs> this but, is great. But if you want to regenerate it, you, you gotta, gotta remove you gotta remove a plus one plus one <laughs> counter. All right. So we see a swing. John activates Blink Moth. He tries to block and then pump. 
Uh, John may have forgotten about the Dark Blast. Yeah, uh, likely not an interaction that he's had to face down too many times. And that's actually why it's on Jacob's side. It's why I think we didn't see him finish off the Ornithopter, is he knew I'm going to need this to deal with the creature land. Yep. And now Kuvia's hand is just a Citadel and an Opal. He's, he's looking at it. I'm not sure he'll be able to deal with the medium beats of Dredge. This is how Dredge wins a lot of his games, too. <laughs> You know, I always thought that way about Legacy Dredge. I'll admit, I have not seen much of this out of Modern Dredge. Legacy Dredge was, was losing these games a lot. Uh, a big upgrade was just Prized Amalgam being a 3-3. Free -free. Yeah, it's better than 1-2s and Icarids. <laughs> and here's a swing from Baugh. Cuvier will take his free block, but he takes two, goes to 16. And now, the sixth land into play for Baugh. Here come the Grave Trolls. Let's count just how big of a monster is it going to be. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Beautiful. Eight, eight. Well, all right then. That's uh, half of Cuvier's current life total. And it's not the only Grave Troll. Jo Jacob can run this back next turn. The other one uh, might even be larger, of course, dredging six. Uh, the Etch Champion can still block this one, but this will free up the prized amalgam to start chipping in for three. John draws Blink Moth Nexus. This is great. Jacob uh, looking to pull ahead thanks to some five mana eight eights with medium regeneration abilities. Yeah, this, this is why Golgari Drove Grave Troll was once banned in modern because it's such a good raid. It could be like a five mana 10 10. How do you even compete with that? Well, Jacob dredges Dark Blast. That dumps another Grave Troll into the yard. Well, all right then. And now he's going to swing just everything. No fear at this point. He knows the initiative is his. Etched Champion is going to have to get in front of Grave Troll. You see, Jacob dredged the Dark Blast because of the Blink Moth. Yeah, he wants to be able to keep chipping in with these Narc Amoebas. He knows attacking into the Etched Champion is not really too productive on the ground. His Flyers are really going to be dealing the majority oh, of the damage just here. So much aggro now for Ba. It's another Stinkweed Imp that adds one more power to his board. Yeah, this is just a Ravnica block draft deck. Rest in peace, the draw from Cuvier. That is... It's too late. Yeah, grave Troll enters with plus one, plus one counters. It's not tracking the creatures in the graveyard. Yeah, also, the Rest in Peace does nothing about these flyers. <laughs> about, about this Paranarch Amoebas, para Stinkweed Imps, just Kuvier down to 10. Now, keep in mind, Kuvier actually does have real magic cards, so he could, in theory, draw out of this. He has the Exiles Away, Boaz Graveyard. In theory. You could play catch with a cranial plating, maybe chunk baw twice with it. There's there's a chance, I think. I think he, ne he needs cranial plating plus, because even with his current artifact count, yeah. it looks like five plus a creature land. The plating wouldn't even be a two-turn clock with the Edge Champion. He's not going to have many chances. A all out swing from Bot. It is six creatures, two Narcomimbas, two Stinkweed Imp, Surprised Amalgam, and of course the 8-8 Grave Troll. 8-8 eight, eight, gets blocked by 2-2 two, two protection from everything. Looks like Kuvia takes the free block, but 6 damage comes across. John is down to 4 and maybe his last turn. Jacob will pass. John's going to need something. Perhaps Gearpur Aether Grid to it's, shoot down these 1-1s. One it's cranial plating. This was... There was a stage the, yeah. in this game where this would have been a relevant draw. What's the issue? It's that we have two two blockers and six attackers. Four damage is going to happen. Right. Remember, Jacob's last card's Dark Blast. If John tries to turn that Nexus into a third blocker, Jacob's not going to let it. Sure, it can save itself, but it has to tap to do it. Exactly. That will be removed from combat. Cuvier going to go through the motions. Here's the cranial plating. He Make Jacob do it at least, right? Right. And the last card, Mox Opal. If you suit up the Edge Champion, it would at least make it so that the Grave Troll has to start regenerating in combat. But the, the, the issue is the flyer, as it has been the whole time. Yeah, and there's also the secondary issue of even if Jacob doesn't play the next... If Jake, we believe that Jacob has him dead on board. But even if Jacob plays it wrong... He's, he's going to win the next turn. You know, this is uh, John's hoping that he stays alive, not hoping he wins. Right. Yeah. Boss still at 19. 
I guess if he somehow were to stay alive and then drew another plating, he could just one-shot Jacob. There are enough artifacts to, to start looking at that. I don't... This isn't real, though. It's, I, right. I don't think Jacob misses. No, he, he's not the kind of player that does that, especially the way he's been playing this yeah. game. He's been chipping in every turn. There's no reason why he would just stop. You mentioned it before with Jacob, one of his strengths as a player, and the strength that may carry him to the top eight here into the Players' Championship is he's just he's very solid on the fundamentals. He's not going to miss anything that's right in front of him. That's just not his nature. Oh, is it, he still has that Scourge Devil in hand, doesn't he? His Blood Ghast. He has haste. Swing the team. Well, that's going to do it. Overkill. John is going to attempt to activate Ink Moth Nexus. He wants to make another blocker. No, says Jacob. And there you have it. It's the handshake. Jacob Baugh does pick up a win in Modern, and it sends him to the top eight of the Invitational.